Welcome to Trading Up Special Edition, where we give you an inside look at job opportunities and the possibility to trade up your lifestyle. Probably one of the toughest decisions we make is what career path to follow, whether fresh out of high school or already in a career that isn't quite what you expected, or perhaps facing a job loss. What are your options? You could just immediately enter the workforce. Many today are hiring with no experience necessary. Maybe a four or more year college degree is your path to a chosen profession. Or yet, another option is to get trained by and learn from the best in the heavy equipment trade, a place where you can unlock your future. You won't just settle for an average run-of-the-mill job. You'll learn on-site from the best in the industry, and you'll get well paid all while building a career in a trade known for their member satisfaction, community involvement, and where opportunities are endless and growth is your destination. On this episode of Trading Up Special Edition, we're heading to the Ohio Operating Engineers training sites for Local 18. Their locations include Richfield, Ohio, Signet, Ohio, Logan, Ohio, and Miamisburg, Ohio, with a jurisdictional area that includes most of the state of Ohio and includes four counties in northern Kentucky. Our first stop will be in Signet, Ohio, to meet with a few instructors and students to hear their thoughts on the program. My name is DeCarlos Hall. Everyone out here calls me DC. I'm one of the instructors here at the Signet training site. This is a four-year apprenticeship program where apprentices come through and they go through four years of training in class as well as out in the field. What we call it is OJT, on-the-job training. So basically they're earning money as they learn. So we call it earning as you learn. The way I like to look at it is it's a big sandbox, a big toy box. We got these big huge toys to come out and, and run and operate equipment. There's some nervousness of course, but once they get over that nervousness, it's, it's quite enjoyable. To me it's fun. It's always been fun from the day I've gotten in all the way up until today. I still enjoy running equipment and operating equipment. What sets us apart from uh, the other trades or the other locals, as an operating engineer, we're actually running equipment where the equipment is doing all the heavy work and all the heavy lifting which in my opinion saves your back, saves your body because you don't have all that wear and tear on your body that you would as an actual person doing physical labor. Our job is to kind of help make their job easier. So the better we are at our jobs as operating engineers, the easier we make it for the other trades that we're working with or assisting at the time. So through these double doors is our shop. This is where all our equipment gets repaired and where our uh, mechanic is at that actually works on our equipment. My name is Tom Holter. I am the mechanic instructor here at uh, the Ohio Operating Engineers Apprenticeship in Signet, Ohio. So the mechanics program started because there's a big need for mechanics. This program started, obviously we have the equipment here that the operators run, and then now we can teach the mechanics real life situations because they can work on the equipment that gets broke doing stuff that it would do out in the field. Right here standing next to me is Xavier. He's one of our uh, mechanic apprentices. This is the spring block of my second year in the apprenticeship. Working on this 236B cat skid steer that needs a head gasket, and this, this project will probably take me through the whole two weeks of my spring block. He was uh, sponsored by a contractor, so what that is is they sponsor him. He's working for them and employed with them, but he's going through our four-year mechanics program where he's learning how to work on diesel equipment and how to repair, how to diagnose, and how to fix the equipment. So right now we're out in our all-weather building, and this is our building that we utilize to be able to train year-round. Here uh, we've got Casey in here, and Casey right now is working on the track loader. So I'm doing a TSP excavation today where you have to dig into the ground with the track loader two times the length of your machine, and two and a half times the width, three foot deep, and I have two and a half hours to complete the excavation. I am a fourth-year apprentice. I'm actually real close to finishing my apprenticeship. I was running equipment for almost eight years, non-union before I got into the apprenticeship. I liked it then, but it, it's miles ahead now. I mean, I, I can't imagine liking what I do more. I've had apprentices that have come through here and have become journeymen. Me personally have come up to me and thank me or thank the apprenticeship and how it changed their life. My name is Norman Jamison Jr. I am the low boy operator for the Shelly Company and I have been officially in the trade since 2003. On a day-to-day -day basis, I operate, haul, unload, and chain down all types of various heavy equipment I haul around. 
Well, my time here taught me a lot. It taught me responsibility. I mean, I had great instructors uh, along the way when I came through. One in particular was our uh, coordinator, Don France. This guy was, uh, he was a real tough cookie, but I learned to appreciate him and love him for all the things that he taught and instilled in me coming into this field. This place is a great learning experience for anyone. I've never been on a machine before in my life until I came to the apprenticeship for Local 18. And here I got to learn how to operate various different machines. One in particular that I love to be on is the bulldozer. I've cut ditches, I've cut hills, I've cut basements, all the type of stuff with that. It's a, it's a very, very, very rewardful experience. The Ohio Operating Engineers provides two pathways for prospective members. The Operating Apprenticeship Program for those wanting to operate heavy machinery and the Maintenance Apprenticeship Program, making sure that machinery continues to run. Before we leave Signet, let's test your knowledge with Trading Up Trivia. In our conversations with DeCarlos Hall, how many years of training does the Ohio Operating Engineers require in their apprenticeship programs? Is it A, two years, B, three years, C, four years, or D, five years. We'll be back with the answer right after this. Welcome back. Before the break we asked in our conversation with DeCarlos Hall, how many years of training does the Ohio Operating Engineers require in their apprenticeship programs? If you answered C, four years, you are correct. Moving on from Signet, Let's head over to Miamisburg, Ohio, the first of three remaining training sites. We'll learn a bit more about these locations and what they offer prospective members looking to improve their lives. My name is James Singleton. I am the regional coordinator of the Miamisburg training site here in Miamisburg, Ohio. An overview of this facility, we have over 200 acres, over 80 pieces of equipment and attachments here. And what we do is we train heavy equipment operators and maintenance technicians how to operate and work on all of the equipment. We have got all kinds of heavy equipment. We have got uh, a crane pad where we have got several different cranes from lattice boom cranes to telescopic boom cranes, carry deck cranes, forklifts for telehandlers, industrial forklifts. We do that kind of training. We have got backhoes, excavators, rollers, scrapers, graders, just all kinds of different equipment to work with dirt. Throughout the program, we've also got paving equipment. We have got dedicated pile driving equipment for like the solar fields, just all kinds of equipment to work with. This site, if it doesn't have it here, it's probably at one of our other sites. And we move our equipment around from site to site around the state, depending on the needs of the membership and what work is heavier in which area. This is our indoor training facility for inclement weather. All four of our training sites have these buildings here. Two of our sites have buildings that's a little bit larger than this, but we're pretty proud of this one. This was the first one built in the nation. It was built in 1997, we're still using it today. And whenever we have bad weather roll in, people can continue their training when the ground gets too cold to be able to dig in it, gets frozen. We'll bring them in here and start training in here and do some of our classes in here. Where we're standing right now is our machine shop. We use this machine shop for training our maintenance technician so they can learn to make their own parts. It's something that's just kind of a lost art with the throwaway society of just getting new parts all the time. We wanted to make sure they learn how to make some things on their own. As we come back, we have got different machining tools. We have got a Scotchman iron worker here that can shear metal. We have got a nice large plasma table a bandsaw right over here so we can cut all of the metal. And just for fun, and so members can do something other than just work on heavy equipment or working on heavy equipment, maybe they watched Forged in Fire a lot. We have got a couple forges here. We've got a power hammer. We have got a belt sander, a press, to where if you wanna come in and build something, you can. It's just something that you can do and bring the family in and enjoy the training site and the facilities. And speaking of forged in fire, this specific majestic forge is built here in Ohio and it's the same one they use on that show. My name is Brian Kamichis. Uh, I'm at the Logan training site in Hawking Hills for Local 18. 
We're sitting on 238 acres right here in the middle of Hawking Hills. This property in history was purchased actually by a union member who actually was able to afford the property way back when and then actually allowed us to purchase off of him at a later time. It's quite an honorable thing for a member to do. Our uh, building, as it was revamped, we built into this new section. We added in this state-of-the-art shop that we have for our maintenance technician apprentices. So we're at the, our Logan facility shop now. This is where the maintenance techs come in to get their training uh, with tools provided if they need them. Basically any instruction on any kind of repair that a machine may need will be taught throughout their four years of apprenticeship here. This facility has been set up nice enough to be able to repair anywhere from eight to 12 machines in this shop at one time. So as we come through the hallway on the left, the, the first room was a tool room for our bigger tools and spare tools that may be needed. And then we walk by two very large, expensive uh, toolboxes. Those hold the mechanics tools. Our instructors bring their own tools in and utilize them in the teachings for the apprentices. Down the wall here underneath of the steps are several toolboxes purchased by our local and our training staff to be able to supply the, the uh, maintenance techs with the tools needed to do everyday repairs. Again, specialty tools are held by the instructors, but there's ample amount of tools to diagnose and repair machines. Throughout the shop at all four corners, we have oil distribution hose reels that we can get any kind of oil out of our bulk oil set up in the room in the back right corner, as well as one supersized air compressor to supply enough air for all the repairs going on and needed in the shop. We have our 10 ton overhead crane above us that travels the length of the building and to the width of it. Makes it extremely handy and useful to uh, move around our, our heavier items and get them into a position where they can be serviced or, or worked on. We also hold a welding class within this area. It would be at the, at the far end of the building. Everything that would be necessary to provide and hold a great welding class to teach our apprentices, whether it be maintenance techs or operators, how to weld and, and fabricate. All four training sites do things identical. Each area provides a different style of student based on where, what their upbringing was and their raising. But ultimately, we try to keep it as identical as we can so that we're providing the same service and that if an apprentice was to leave this region and go to Richfield, it would be almost the exact same thing they were getting here. I'm Matt Fuentes, I'm the Regional Coordinator here at Richfield Training Site for the Operating Engineers Apprenticeship Program. I did go through the apprenticeship program back in 1999, you know, so I am a graduate apprentice of the program. We are the smallest of all four training sites through Ohio. We only are 48 anchors of property here. Kind of puts us apart as this training site compared to the other ones. We have a tower crane, some specialty machinery. We also have a boom truck, you know, we are starting to train on. We do a lot of grade all training here. This is our crane pad down here at Richfield Training Site. Primarily this crane pad is set up, you know, all for testing. We do get a lot of members throughout the state that come up here. We have our Manawalk 8000. We do have a boom truck. That is one of the newest cranes we have. You know, that is for testing too. It's a good addition to our training site. We do have a tower crane in the background. You know, that is our wolf tower crane. We are the only training site with a tower crane in the state of Ohio right now. Right now it's at 100 feet. You know, that is also one of our testing machines. We do a lot of outreach. I tell every high school kid coming out of high school right now, come up here with your mom, your dad, grandparents, whoever you're living with. Come up here, walk around the facility. I'll show them the whole facility, how everything goes. Tell them what the requirements are. It's one of those opportunities, you gotta take advantage of it. For those looking to learn more about or are ready to join the Ohio Operating Engineers family, the Ohio Operating Engineers has a detailed and straightforward process for you to follow. 
What makes an ideal candidate is somebody that likes to get something accomplished, somebody that's gonna have the initiative to make themselves better throughout their entire career. If you like working outdoors, and if this was something you'd wanna do, you would wanna get on our website at www.local18training.com. You can learn a lot about us on that website. There's also a spot to fill out applications. We take online applications year round. After you put your application in, we will contact you to do application testing. When you pass that, there's an interview process. Then we invite you to our pre-admission orientation, which is three weeks where you would be coming to one of our four training sites and being evaluated during that time. Yeah, that is a 136 hour, three week scheduled class. You're going to come through those doors, we're going to go over some safety things and get you familiar with safety and what to look for when you're out there operating the equipment. Standard PPE here at the training site is hard hat, gloves, steel toe work boots and safety glasses. Those are the basic safety PPE that's required out here at the training site. And we're just gonna see if you can follow directions, if you can listen, can you stay on task. We're gonna look at you not only as your mechanical ability and operating skills, but your personality skills. When you come through those doors, it makes no difference as to whether you've operated equipment or whether you've never operated equipment before. So it's basically, in my opinion, it's three weeks of tryouts. That is a good time for them to decide if it's for certain something they want to do for a living. And it helps us to decide whether or not they'll make a good apprentice for our local. So once you get through your three weeks of PAO, you're going to go and you're going to go to the hall and you're going to get indentured and you're going to put your card in the hall. And at that point, you're available for work. We are an earn as you learn program. Throughout the entire four year apprenticeship program, you go out and make a living as you're doing that. Report back to here whenever you're not working and on specific times. We do a week in the spring, a week in the fall and two weeks in the winter for what we call block training. That's 160 hours of training here a year. Some of that is classroom, some of that is in the field on equipment trying to get upgrades. You're going to take that week's time to try and get some of those first year requirements completed. Winter block is going to be two weeks and that's going to be all classroom where you're going to get your classroom requirements for that first year done. Other than that, you're out there working, making a living. During the year, they have to get a thousand hours on the job training that's working for that contractor. Typically what happens with a lot of calls are for like haul trucks, for skid steers or water wagons or things like that. But you're going to get your experience out there in the field working. They realize that they are an apprentice and that their uh, experience is minimal. They will help them along the way. On the maintenance technician side, they are, are double that. It is an eight week process when they come in. So they come in for two months out of the year and they will be in our shop learning various you know, aspects of, of the repair side of things. As long as you get your upgrades each year, you get your pay raise each year. So once you've completed your four years, you've got your 4,000 OJT hours, you've got all your classroom requirements done, you've got your machine requirements done, and you've got your 640 hours time out here at the training site. You become a journey person getting full pay and full benefits for the rest of your career. But the whole purpose or the whole thing you want to be doing while you're going through those four years, practice and become the best operator that you can be because once your four years is up, now you have to compete with the journeyman. While you're an apprentice, you're competing with other apprentices which has you in a smaller pool. Now you go into the big pool with the pros or the journeyman and you have to be able to work and operate and run equipment on the same level if not better than them because let's just be honest, the way it all works, the good operators are the ones that work. Our starting pay as a journeyman operator is right around 44, 14 an hour. So as a first year apprentice, you would earn 50% of scale not running equipment. That's where you'd be an oiler, a helper, or a crane operator's assistant. But if you're running equipment as a first year apprentice, then you would make 60% of scale. And then what happens is every year, they get a 10% uh, increase. Each year that you upgrade to second year, to third year, to fourth year, you would go from 50 to 60 to 70 to 80% until you graduate and then you would be at 100%. So with the pay, on top of that, there is all your benefits. So contractor on your behalf is putting in another $16 and some whatever change it is. That's going into your pension, your health care, and medical reimbursement, apprenticeship scholarship funds. That's your fringe package. That To me, that's why you're becoming a union member. You're working for the pension. The money that you will make in this industry is very, very high scale. The challenges that you will overcome in this field is very rewarding for yourself and as well as anyone else. As an 18-year-old kid coming out of high school, 
getting into the operating engineers, you're looking at making roughly $24 to $25 an hour starting out as a first year apprentice making money, not going into debt. And then receiving a 10% raise every year, medical, and your pension and retirement. 30 years in the operating engineers, 48 years old, you're still not old and you still have put the time in and will put more time in to become an operating engineer. And I guarantee you, it will change your life. So, what do you think? Does joining the Ohio Operating Engineers team sound like a winning move to you? If you're 18 years old, have a valid driver's license, have dependable transportation, and are ready to work, you already have the basic requirements met. Make the move now and apply to the Ohio Operating Engineers, where you'll be trained into a great career with competitive pay, great benefits, and more. For more information, head to www.local18training.com. If someone is curious about the Operating Engineers, visit one of our training sites. We always welcome them to call or even go to our website. We have tons of information on there. We'd be more than happy to show you around, give you a tour of the facility, and explain the whole program to you and the industry to you. If it's something that you would enjoy and you have a career-oriented mindset, because we don't look at this as just a job, this is a career to us. Plus, you get to learn a skill that you get to take with you for the rest of your life. You can go anywhere in the world with this skill. I can personally say for myself, I wish I would have knew about the operating engineers at 18 years old. I didn't get in until I was 36, but I'd have loved to have gotten in here at 18 years old. If there is someone interested, right now mechanics are few and far between, and there are so many jobs out there for mechanics right now. It is a great way to make a living. You will always have friends. If you are a mechanic, you will always work. I've been in the operators for 31 years, and I've never been laid off a day in my life. Since joining the apprenticeship, everything about my life is better. I've been able to buy a house. I have excellent health care. I'm a type 1 diabetic, so I need excellent health care, and it's the best that I could imagine. You know, all I have to do is go to work, and everything is taken care of. Let us show you what we have to offer. Let's have a talk. Let's take a tour and let's see if this is something that you really may be interested in doing and maybe you can become an operating engineer. I think getting into the Local 18 apprenticeship would be the absolute best thing you could do.